mean, being around Cal Collins was immediately eye-opening for me in terms of tangible, specific things to do or not to do. But most of them were, I mean, it's, it's conceptual because Cal Collins had grown up in rural Indiana. He'd started playing the mandolin when he was six years old. Everyone in his family played string instruments. He had started playing what we would call bluegrass from, again, the age of six. I've seen, I could show you a photo of him when he's six with a mandolin. He looks like he knows what he's doing at that age. I remember, you know, having some theory from my childhood and some knowledge of things I'd picked up and thinking, okay, I'm in, I'm in getting into jazz now. Time to get serious. Time to get real academic. I'm going to get the books out. I'm going to get, you know, a theory chops happening. I'm going to get my modes going, inversions, you know, here we go. So I remember one time going to see Cal Collins. He was playing in a hotel. I have it written down on a napkin somewhere in a little memento box. And like, I was going to write, like, write down the answers to his questions. And the first thing I said was like, where would you play a C scale? C, and he was like, I don't know really if I could play a C scale. And I'm like, well, you know, really? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, what if you were playing in C? What would you play? He's like, well, I just play this. And then he just starts playing like some wild stuff. So the tangible takeaway for me, I mean, that, that, those experiences with him really blew my mind. And, and, and just briefly, his protege was Kenny Poole, who had, was really my main mentor. Kenny was 10 years younger, but a very similar. Came from a blue collar, sort of self-taught background and had learned every note Chet Atkins had ever played when he was in high school and then got into Cal when Cal was a little bit older than him and he started playing with Cal. And they were like the kind of guys, like if you were a teenage or 20 year old <laughs> daughter and like you brought them home to meet your parents, like your parents would have been a little scared. Like, hmm, I'm not sure. Like, like there, there, there was an element of that, like within rock and blues that was a little, not only dangerous, but like, it's just, it was not sanitized in any way. And it was, and it was totally, that was like a takeaway. Now, now in terms of like a tangible, like, well, what chord did I learn from them? I mean, I remember Cal showed me one chord. He's like, I like this chord, you know, it works over a, you know, a seventh chord. It was very confusing. I mean, but, but I don't know if that's a takeaway that can help people, but I think maybe it, it should, because it was to take, I, I, I was wrestling for a long time with like, how can they be so, have such a lack of the terminology and yet play so great. Like what is happening here? What, and what it really started to teach me was how much of that stuff was unnecessary to play great and what, what is necessary and, 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 and get more simple and simplify. What is, what is necessary? Well, there's some basics that they knew, even though Cal said he couldn't play a C scale, you could play a C chord and he could play all kinds of ideas that would work over that sound. He knew the very basics. It, it taught me that learning the basics and being able to be verbal with the basics, to, to, to be able to speak the basics, to be able to use them as foundational tools to teach yourself was like all you really needed. All right, thank you so much. I'm Andy Brown. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, please like it and please subscribe.